Now that we have our character set up, it's time for the animation blueprint. And set this to our direction. And plug this in at the very And there is a state when the character is going to be armed. So we need to set up state machine for it. And I'm not going to use the traditional state machines from the animation blueprint alone. I'm going to use an enumeration to control the state machines. In my content folder, I'm going to right click and create a new folder. And this folder will be named enumeration. All my enumerations that I'll be creating in this game will be placed in this enumeration folder. I'm going to go into this enumeration folder, right click and search for an enumeration. This enumeration will be named as E underscore anim states. Open this enumeration and the first enumeration value will be unarmed. This will be our default animations. The second will be armed dash rifle. And the third one is going to be armed dash pistol. And now we're going to go ahead and save this. Close the anim states. In our animation blueprint, we're going to create a new variable. This will be named anim states. And this will be of type E underscore anim states that we just created. Compile and save it. At this current setup, we have all of our basic idle jog animation in our local motion. And then that's actually getting cached as a cache pose. And then in our main state, the game is using the cache pose to create the local motion and using that to create our land, end to land, and also our jump animations in here. So we don't want to touch any of that. And that will be in our unarmed state. Because the local motion, the cache local motion is included in the main state, we can use our main state as our unarmed state. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this main state from the default group, drag it up here, and drag off of this main state. And then I'm going to search for cache. And there's an option for new save cache pose. I'm going to name this as cache underscore main states. Now, cache creates a reference to the state machine. So everything that's inside of this state machine will be inside of this cache. So instead of having to call this main state as a reference, we can we have the ability now to use this cache state anywhere in the anim graph. And now that we have removed our main state and added a cache main state, now we need a new state machine to control our entire animation blueprint. So we're going to right click and create a new state machine. And this one's going to be named anim space states manager compile and select the anim states manager and on the right side where it says allow conduit entry states make sure you check that on and connect this anim states manager to the slot default slot open the anim state manager drag off of the entry and add a conduit and this would be our state selector you need to specifically allow the conduit to have entry states if you don't check this box right here you're going to get an error saying that the conduit cannot be off of the entry now we can create our unarmed state. So let's go ahead and right click and create add state. And this would be called unarmed. Open this up. And here, remember how we made our cache main states? We're going to call that cache main state in there. So to do that, we're going to right click and search for cache. And there's use cache pose cache main states. Now you can actually connect this to the output animation. And that will set up our unarmed state. To transition to the unarmed state, I will just drag from the state selector, connect it here. And in the transition node, I can now drag in my anim state and say get anim state. And I'm going to do an equal enum node and connect this Boolean to the can enter transition and set this to unarmed. So while we are unarmed, our game is allowed to go into our normal anim state. And we will do the same thing for our armed. So here I'm going to add in a new state and I'm going to name this as armed dash rifle. And the transition node, I'll add in the anim state enum and do the same thing as equal. And this will be selected as armed rifle and connect the Boolean here and compile. We go back and we do one more right click and add in a new state. And this would be armed pistol drag from the state selector and connect this here. And the transition node, one more time, we're going to do our get anim states equal enum. And we're going to connect this Boolean here and set this to armed pistol. We're going to go into our armed rifle, create a new state machine here. And this state machine, we're going to name this as rifle animations and connect this to our output result. We're going to work on this in just a moment. 
Same thing here for the armed pistol. We're going to create a new state machine. This will be named pistol animations and then connect it in here as such. Now let's go get some animations for our armed rifle. In Mixamo, when you select an animation, the animation is going to be playing while moving in the viewport. Unreal Engine is not a fan of this. So whenever you download an animation from Mixamo, make sure that you check this in place so that the animation in Mixamo has a root lock forced on it before we even bring it into the game. So let's go ahead and select some of these rifle animations and start downloading them into the game. And make sure when you download, you select 30 frames per second and also without skin. As we already have our Mixamo character in game, we can use the skin from the Mixamo character and then select download. And this should be good for us to get started for now. In my Mixamo folder, inside of the animation folder, I'm going to create a new folder and this would be named rifle animations. Open this up. I'm going to drag and drop the animations that we just downloaded. And here, I'm going to select my passive marker man skeleton. This is my Mixamo skeleton. And then click on import. Now, let's confirm to make sure that the animation is playing in place and not moving around the screen. So if I were to select my rifle run, it should look like this. If the character is moving forward out of the viewport, that means the character is not running in place. And you need to go back to Mixamo and make sure that in place box is checked before you download your animation. Now, let's go ahead and save all first. Then select all of your asset, right click and click on retarget animation. You're going to get the retarget animation screen. Here, we're going to search for Manny. This is our default skeleton that comes with the game. I have two of them because the survival character that we downloaded also comes with the Manny. And then we have our original Manny. So make sure you select the original Manny when you are retargeting. And now I'm going to go ahead and select all of this new animations that I just downloaded and click on export animation. And I'm going to select that retarget folder that we just created and then also add in a prefix for RTG. This way I know these are all the retargeted assets. And one more thing, this one doesn't really say rifle for all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and add a rifle in it as well and export. Select export. And now I see that all of these animations have been retargeted. And now if I again check my Manny, the Manny should be running in place not running out of the viewport. Let's go ahead and save all. Now in my third person folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and name this as animation underscore blend spaces. Open this up, right click, and then go under the animation option and select blend space. And we need to select our correct mannequin skeleton here again, and go ahead and name this as BS for blend space, underscore rifle, underscore locomotion. Open this up. On the horizontal axis, we're going to set this to our direction of the character. And the direction minimum value is going to be from minus 180 to plus 180. I'm going to leave this grid division for four at this time. And then also select snap to grid. And let's go ahead and set our speed. Our maximum minimum value is at zero and our maximum speed that the player can move, reach at. Let's put it to 600. And then also snap to grid. At the bottom of the graph where the speed is zero, regardless of what the player is doing, they should always be idle. So the bottom portion of this entire chart is actually when the player speed is zero. So we're going to find our idle rifle idle animation and we're going to plug it into the bottom portion of this entire graph, just like this. And right above the graph, if I hold down control and if I move my mouse, I can see the cursor moving along with it. And I can see the speed at this point of the graph, which is at 149, 150. At this point, I want the player to be walking. So I'm going to drag in the walk animation in here. And also I have the walk left and walk right. So I'm going to plug in the walk left on the left side and then the walk right on the right side. And next up, if I hold down control and move up, my speed is going to be about two, about 300. So here I want the player to start running. So I'm going to plug in the run animation here and then also run left and run right. And then right at the very top at 600, I want the player to start sprinting forward, just like that. And then plug in the sprint left and sprint right. Now in Unreal, regardless of the speed, if the player is facing minus 180 or 180, they're actually walking backward. So we want to plug in the backward animation all around the left and the right sides. So I'm going to plug in the walk backward on the right side and also on the left side. And then the run backward on this right side here 
and also the left side. And I should have a sprint backward, there it is, and then plug that to the right side and also to the left side just like that. So that is it for building the blend space for our character. Now we can go ahead and save it. And in my animation BP, I'm going to go into the armed rifle and go into the state rifle state machine, drag off of this entry and create a new state. And this would be named locomotion. Inside of here, I'm going to drag my blend space that we just created and then plug this into the output animation post. Now we need the direction and the speed of the character. Now, if you're using Unreal Engine 5.5, under the essential movement data variables here, you should already have the ground speed available. If you don't have the ground speed available, it's very simple to calculate the ground speed. So you can click on event graph and then find where you have your get owning actor. If you don't have get owning actor, you can just go ahead and right click and say get owning actor, and you should be able to get that node. Now off of that get owning actor, you're going to go ahead and get the velocity of that owning actor. And then the return value of the velocity, you're going to search for vector length. And this is basically your ground speed. You can now go ahead and promote this to variable and you can name this as speed and then that will be your speed. Because we already have the speed, I'm going to go ahead and remove this. We don't need this. But I will keep the velocity because we need to calculate the direction. So to calculate direction, you can actually right click and search for calculate direction. And you will get a fancy little node which takes in velocity and base rotation. We already have velocity here, so I'm gonna plug this in here like this. And to get the base rotation, off of the owning actor, I'm going to say get actor rotation and plug that in the base rotation. And now I'm going to promote this return value and name this direction. And the set direction, we want to get it set in the event blueprint update animation because this runs every single tick. So we want to make sure that the direction is being communicated to the animation blueprint for every single tick. So here where we have a sequence, I'm just added a new pin for then three, and I'm just gonna connect this to my direction as such. I've also added a comment box to notify that this is where we are calculating our direction. Now we can compile. Now back in our local motion of the rifle animation, I'm going to connect this direction here as such, and then the ground speed here as such. Now you can see our character automatically takes on the rifle animation. Now one thing that we're going to quickly do is to go into the state selector and check this can enter transition so that the animation blueprint can switch between these three animation states. And then make sure you compile and then you save it. Now that's it for the armed rifle. Let's go ahead and do our pistol. Now as good as Mixamo is, Mixamo doesn't really have much of the pistol animation. And there is a pack in the Fab Store for $14.99, which contains a lot of pistol animation that could really come in handy. For $15, I believe this pack is really worth it. However, if you don't want to spend any type of money in getting these good animations, you could always use the animation starter pack that comes from Epic, and it's free to add to your project. And it has a couple pistol animations, but however, this pack does not really have any pistol movement animations. You could use the one from Mixamo in conjunction with this. However, for ease of use and faster implementation, I'm going to go ahead with the pistol locomotion pack. Now with all of my pistol animations downloaded, I'm gonna go back into my animation blend spaces, right click, animation, and then add in a new animation blend space and select my SK mannequin as the skeleton. Set the name to BS underscore pistol underscore locomotion. Let's open this up. And same thing like we did for the rifle, we're going to do our direction. This will be minus 180 is our minimum value, and 180 is our max value, and then snap to grid. And the vertical axis would be our speed with 0 and 600. Now we need to go ahead and retarget all of that assets that we just downloaded from the asset store to this Unreal Engine 5.5 mannequin. I have gone ahead and retargeted all of the assets that I just recently downloaded to work with the SKM Manny skeleton. Now we're ready to do our blend space. So in our pistol blend space, first I'm going to look for the idle. And I'm going to drop it at the bottom, just like how we did for the rifle. It's the exact same thing for the pistol as well. And now I'm going to look for a walk animation. Now I have the pistol walk animation here. I'm going to go ahead and drop it here. And then the walk left to the left side of it and the walk right to the right side of it. And then the walk backward, I'm going to drop it on the left, far left and the far right side of this. Next is our jog animation. So I'm going to search for jog and pistol. And then again, jog backward, I'll put it down here to the left and the right side. Jog forward right in the middle and then jog left. 
jog right. Now, last we have is the sprint animation for the pistol. I have one pistol sprint animation here. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in there. I'm going to also take the jog backward loop and then plug it on the top left and right. And then also I'm going to search for the jog left and light right loop and then I'm going to plug it on the top one more time. Just because I don't have any sprint left and right, this should be able to compensate. So if I hold down control, I can see that I'm walking forward and there's a little twist turn here. I'm going to take this jog forward and then plug it in here as well. So now if I hold down control and I can see the character is moving, walking, jogging, and then sprinting, I can actually add the jog left and the jog right, right about here. And that should still work just like that. So we're done with the pistol blend space. And now in our ABP Manny, where we have our armed pistol, Inside of a pistol animation in the entry point, we're going to go ahead and create a new state. And this would be our local motion. Open this up and drag in your pistol blend space that we just created and then connect it here. And for this pistol blend space, you need the direction and also the ground speed. Compile and save. Now we have effectively set up our state manager. And we, to test it, I can click on the anim states. And if I click unarmed and if I press compile, you can see that the player is in the unarmed idle state. If I go ahead and select armed rifle and press compile, the player goes into the armed rifle state. And then when I go ahead and select the pistol and compile, the player goes into the pistol idle state where the pistol is to the side of the player. So this is all you have to do to make your anim state selector using an enumeration rather than having multiple different state machines set up in one graph. We're just simplifying it by using a conduit which selects the proper animation state based on the transition rule that we have created. And again, the, you can use this to create any type of transition. Now, if you have like, let's say a one-handed weapon, you will have all of the animations for the one-handed weapon in here. And then you can create another state for your sword and shield animation, right? So, and, and so on and so forth. So you can just use this state selector conduit system to be able to add in any type of classes that has a completely different set of animations. And you can use this for any type of game type, including RPGs and stuff. Now to test this in game, I can set my anim state to armed pistol, and then I can compile. And then when I press play, and as you can see, the player is holding onto a pistol onto the side. And if I move, now the player is running with the pistol in their hand. And if I now switch it to the armed rifle and then click on compile, and if I play, the player is in the rifle state and now I can run and the player is running with the rifle as well. Now, one last thing that we need to fix in here is that when I move to the right, the player is turning and moving that direction rather than strafing left, strafing right. And this is what I want to fix now. To fix this is pretty straightforward. You just need to go into your third person character, click on character movement and search for orient rotation to movement and then uncheck this. And when now when you compile and when you play, the player is going to be running forward and then player will now run backward and player will go strafe left right so our entire blend space is working very well now we have another problem is that now if i'm running forward and if i rotate my mouse just like this the player is not going to turn towards where my mouse is facing again let's fix this back in your third person character select the character movement and here we're going to search for use controller desired rotation and now check this and then compile and now if i press play I can run forward and as the camera rotates, the player is going to rotate with the camera. And if I stop and if I strafe in any other direction, the player is going to properly play their blend space animation, just like this. All right, folks. So I think that looks pretty good. And I think we're good to close off this animation state and blend spaces for our tutorial here. And I'll catch you on the next one.